Hi, in this video I'm going to show you several features for blending layers with the uh, Product Advanced Master Material for Props. I will start with the most common feature, Texture Mask Blending. This method uses a texture as a mask RGBA to blend the layers. This mask can be a regular noise like those included in the product or a mask that you have created with Substance Painter, like for this car. One of the main advantages of using this method is that you don't have to depend on the texel density of the 3D model. Because your mask may have a lower resolution, but since the textures displayed are tiling textures, you won't have any loss of resolution when you are close. As opposed to the traditional method, you can see that the textures of the vehicle have a lower quality because this vehicle was created using the traditional method. So the textures have been baked to the vehicle. To help you understand, you can see that this is the method used in The Last of Us Part 2 and the Part 1 remake. <laughs> I encourage you to check out the work of Matthew Trevelyan Johns. I have included the link to his portfolio in the description. The techniques and master material of Naughty Dog were a huge inspiration for creating this product. This method of mask and tiling textures doesn't just apply to vehicles, you can also use it for any 3D model. For texturing this car, I used two masks I created in Substance Painter using generators and painted the masks of rust and dirt. In order to create your masks in Substance Painter, you need to create user channels. Click on the plus button and tick a user. You can then rename this user to the name of your mask. You can combine up to four masks in a texture using the four channels RGBA. So if you're using a single texture and want to have four masks, all you need to do is create four user channels from user zero to three, for example. You need to select the output maps R plus G plus B plus A to be able to put each masks in the four channels. There are 16 user channels, so you can use up to 16 masks and pack them into four textures. Once you have your mask, you can create your material blend. When working with layers, the first thing to do is to set up your base layer. In this case, it's the textures of the car. Then you can add your first layer. Layers don't necessarily have to be placed in one way or the other. It depends on the results you want to achieve. In Material Layer Blend Props, enable Texture Mask Blending, then in Texture Mask, select the mask you wish to use with your 3D model. When you blend a layer, no matter which feature you use, you can enable Blend Previous Material, which combines the current layer with the previous layer. You can then control the opacity if you want to reduce the combined effect. And with the parameter material layer opacity, you can control the opacity of the whole layer. You can also view the mask to get a better idea of the blending process. The parameters white and black intensity are similar to a level to adjust the mask. The mask I created for this car use only the R and G channels. Channel R GBA selection allows you to choose the channel of your mask. The channels of the mask are 1 for R, 2 for G, 3 for B, and 4 for A. Contrast also allows you to adjust the mask, and opacity controls the visibility of the mask. You can invert the mask. 
The feature histogram select allows you to have more control over your mask with histogram select position and range. Now the rust layer is finished, I will add the last layer for the dirt. car is now finished. Texture mask blending is also very useful for texturing elements of the environment such as the ground, the floor, or the walls of buildings. This time I will use a Perlin noise as mask. You can use mask noise which by default affects only the edges of the mask. As you can see the first mask is used to create the main areas and mask noise is used to add details. Once again blend previous material adds the details of the previous layer. You also have the possibility of using World Position and Trip Planner. When using World Position, you can change the projection axis. One is for X, two is for Y, three is for Z. You can combine the different features together except for angle blending, which works differently. Height blending allows you to compare the heights of the two materials for the blending process. Don't forget to insert the texture maps of the two materials to make it work correctly. You can quickly achieve interesting blendings to create your environment, and you can have a more realistic result with tessellation. You can disable the parameter affect edges only so that mask noise affects the entire first mask. You can create stunning, realistic materials in just a few steps. Your only limit is your imagination. Another example for buildings, if you don't want to take the time to bake masks to blend the different layers, you can use Triplanar, which offers a faster and more procedural solution, but keep in mind that every feature has a cost in the overall shader complexity. However, don't be too restrained in the use of features either. That's why you need to learn more about how to optimize your project. I've included a tutorial link in the description that can help you. This technique is also a good alternative to vertex painting because it allows you to achieve variations a lot faster without having to hand paint each mesh. The feature distance field blending allows you to use the distance field of the meshes to blend the layers. To make this work, you need to uncheck Affect Distance Field Lighting on the mesh that uses the feature. If you use several meshes with this feature, you can activate a Prox AO. And you can also keep Affect Distance Field Lighting checked like it is by default. When using Distance Field, you need to make sure that only the meshes you want have the checkbox ticked to avoid having a mesh that modifies the desired look of the blend. Unfortunately, distance field and tessellation don't work very well together as there's a visual glitch when you're close to the material. Don't forget that tessellation is still an experimental stage. If you don't use tessellation, there's no problem. You can add depth to your blends thanks to the feature mask edges to normal, which detects the edges of the mask and creates a normal map using DDX DDY. 
giving the feeling of different depths between the two layers. You have parameters to adjust a better normal map and parameters for fade distance that allow you to disable the normal map when the camera is close and far away. Because DDX DDY generates a normal map in real time, this method has technical limitations which mean that the result is not always ideal, but it's the only solution that allows you to generate a normal map from the blending masks. If you like to add depth to your materials, you need to use tessellation when using blended layers. Because parallax occlusion will probably give you a bad result due to the technical limitations of the way the layer system and parallax occlusion works. The feature height tilt blending allows you to blend layer with a height tilt and direction of tilt. This allows you to create complex blendings that would be impossible to create that fast without this feature. This feature was directly inspired by The Last of Us for the submerged look of the vehicles. This feature can also be used with custom primitive data which allows you to have different looks with a single material. Each vehicle has mud at a custom location, meaning that vehicles can be duplicated and placed in another scene without visible mud and without having to modify the material instance. These vehicles are static, but could also be vehicles that move. You can enable the parameter object position to ensure that all the blending mass follow the position of the vehicle. The feature angle blending allows you to blend the layer based on angle. There are two methods of blending. Normal blending allows you to blend using the mesh normals, while vertex blending allows you to blend using the mesh vertices. Normal blending is mainly used to add detail to the blend, which is why the opacity of the normal map is disabled by default. This means that the normal map of the previous layer is used instead. Vertex blending is the main system for blending layers, providing better blending results for large areas and also allowing you to use the height map of the layer. You can also change the direction of the angle and also invert it. As explained previously with vertex blending, you have the height of the layer, which gives you a realistic blend with the tessellation. Finally, the feature vertex painting blending allows you to paint the vertices of the mesh to blend the layer. 
Using the Mesh Paint Mode feature in the editor only works with meshes that don't have Nanite enabled, but you can paint your mesh in external software like Blender and import your mesh with your vertex painting. You can use the four channels RGBA by changing the number to select the right channel. Mask noise is useful for achieving a better result, but it requires a mesh that is not too dense. This means that it's preferable to have space between each triangle, otherwise a good transition will be more difficult to create. Here's how you can create a vertex painting directly on your mesh in Blender. You must use the colors red, green, blue, alpha, in this example, I use red. Once you have exported your mesh, when importing it, you must choose replace in the vertex color option. This way you can use vertex painting with Nanite. It is possible that your blend is inverted so you can invert the blend if this is the case. That's all for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to be informed about the next tutorials.